Hello everyone, my name is Linus Lebelis, I'm Senior Software Engineer from Continuum. So in this talk uh, I will present I will present Tungsten, which can move uh, data between Oracle and MySQL, and uh, the agenda for today is uh, we'll introduce Tungsten Replicator, its powers, we then look at heterogeneous replication, then I'll do a couple of demos to show you that it really works and it is not theory. Uh, I will show you Tungsten Enterprise because it's really cool, but it's a little bit off topic. And we'll wrap up. So about Continuum, it, is, uh, it provides clustering and replication solutions for open source databases. And we, in essence, we have two products, Tungsten Replicator, which is open source uh, flexible and uh, fast replication engine and Tungsten Enterprise, which is a commercial replication and uh, high availability and scalability solution for MySQL and PostgreSQL. Um, my, as software engineer, uh, focus is actually on heterogeneous replication and on the enterprise. So let's talk about <coughs> that. Ah, some interesting facts. Uh, Tungsten Replicator was nominated Application of the Year in 2011 MySQL User Conference. Uh, and Tungsten Enterprise uh, is installed in, a, in one uh, place which uh, processes 500 million transactions per day. So it's a pretty big deployment. And they use Tungsten Enterprise for HA. To Tungsten Replicator. It is uh, a fast open source database replication engine, GPL version 2. Um, from the ground up, it was designed for speed and uh, versatility, flexibility, and uh, we tend to call it Golden Gate without the price tag. <laughs> That's what uh, really attracts people to heterogeneous replication offering. Uh, but it can do a lot more. How does it work? So if you have MySQL master, how does it replicate to other MySQL server or Oracle server? Just a general slide to give you an overview. So when uh, you have MySQL master, you turn on the binner logging, and each transaction that is written to the database is logged in the file, in the binary log. Then, Tungsten Replicator parses the binary log. It tails the binary log and uh, understands the format so it can extract the transactions. It then saves uh, this transaction into its own transaction history log, which is abbreviated as THL. Uh, this is done so we have uh, global transaction IDs and uh, we, we are crash safe. We were crash safe and uh, you have a history. Um, on the slave side, there is also a replicator which uh, pulls the events. It can restart on any position needed. It also has its own THL, transaction history log, in which the transaction is saved. And uh, finally, the slave applies to the underlying database. Uh, any replicator can be master and slave at the same time. So you can do, if you have a slave, you can actually connect another slave of this slave and replicate. So it's, uh, it doesn't matter whether it's master or slave. Um, each tungsten replicator can have multiple services. So it's like uh, having multiple replicators inside one operating system process. And uh, each service uh, has a pipeline. You can configure this pipeline uh, manually or uh, by using some tungsten installation commands. And it's, uh, it's like constructor. It, it consists of stages. And each stage has three um, steps. Extract, filter, and apply. So, you can extract from the database, filter transaction, transform it, 
and apply this filtered transaction uh, to transaction history log or to a database. It depends on which stage you are. The idea behind this is that this uh, building block for replication. This is a slide that shows multiple services per replicator. So in this slide, we have three replicators. Uh, we actually have two masters and one slave. So we have a uh, New York master, a Frankfurt master, and a London slave. This is so-called famine replication, when data is aggregated. And uh, as you can see, uh, the London slave has two services. So one service for the New York master and one service for the Frankfurt master. This way we can implement the multi-master um, solutions. And I'm going through this quickly because I, I will show you how it works in practice, but I want to give you an overview. Um, another nice feature that Replicator has is parallel apply. So, you know that uh, MySQL slaves has tendency to lag behind because in MySQL, um, in the master side, you have this multi-threadedness and your transaction is uh, executed in multiple threads. Um, but on the slave side, uh, <coughs> it boils down to a single bottleneck. And uh, this causes the, the so-called slave lag. With Tungsten Replicator, it can cure this because it can parallelize the apply side. So if you have sharded application, let's say a database with multiple schemas uh, which are loosely coupled, so Replicator is capable of sharding those schemas and applying in parallel on the slave side. And, uh, this increases performance in those use cases. Can you parallelize a uh, single uh, app like you, or is it always or is the SQL always executed serially? It, what? what do you repeat? Um, can you parallelize the apply process? So if you have a, a stream coming in from mm -hmm. one from source, is mm -hmm. it always executed serially? So what uh, it does, if the stream comes in and uh, you have uh, in that stream transactions that are executed against different schemas, so you have uh, db1, db2, db3, it will parallelize automatically. Yes, yes uh, uh, my point was that uh, if you have just uh, one source or one schema huh. coming in, is it always serial uh, apply or do you parallelize that? Currently, we have uh, states at that point that uh, you should parallelize uh, between schemas. Uh, it's pretty flexible. You could do that, do that, but then it becomes risky because you risk to uh, break serialization. Mm -hmm. And uh, even with this parallel apply, if you have a shared table, which is uh, shared between the databases, uh, and uh, transaction commits into that table, uh, we will wait until all the parallel queues uh, finish, commit, and then uh, apply that shared transaction, and then resume parallelization again. Mm -hmm. So this really uh, is uh, faster if you have like multi-tenant application. Each client has its own database. And, and the shared uh, tables are not updated often. Um, also, uh, Replicator can load data warehouses. And uh, now we're getting closer to the heterogeneous replication and Oracle. So, uh, in this slide you can see my SQL master with one replicator which uh, loads a data warehouse. Currently we uh, have deployments on Vertica, which uh, looks similar to MySQL, though it is an uh, analytics database, and Greenplum, which is based on PostgreSQL. 
or looks similar at least to positive SQL. Um, and if you have a warehouse and try to put transactions like separately, each transaction to the database, it will be very slow. Um, and especially as, as you will have millions of transactions. So instead, how you usually do that is uh, batch load. Uh, you take uh, 10,000 transactions and uh, <coughs> insert to the warehouse with one single command. Uh, in Vertica case, this is load data in file equivalent command, like MySQL has. Um, it also supports like streaming protocol. You can just directly pump uh, those 10,000 transactions via GDBC driver. And uh, so we support that. And uh, how it works. So on the MySQL master, uh, transactions are written. Okay. <laughs> and uh, on the replicator, replicator is extracting them, but uh, there is a setting buffer size. So you will set a buffer to, instead of being 1 or 10, you will set it to 10,000. And replicator will write 10,000 transactions into a buffer, or or if your, uh, your data warehouse is using CSV files for loading into a CSV file. And uh, when the buffer is full, it will apply all those transactions in a single command. So that's how you gain speed with the warehouses. But on the other hand, you don't have a nightly job. This is real time, almost real time. Just as the buffer uh, becomes full, it is applied. So, with that said, um, Replicator can provide very flexible topologies. And uh, almost uh, many of these topologies you can just test with open source. Some of them, of course, are closed source, um, like uh, replicating from Oracle. But uh, the idea is that you can have, like shown in this slide, master with multiple slaves, which is vanilla replication. You can have famine, as we mentioned, you have multiple masters and aggregate data into one slave. Uh, you can also have all masters. So the data is shared between all masters. And unlike MySQL circular replication, you do not have single point of failure. And uh, it's uh, fairly easy to change the master if uh, one is down. Um, we also support star topology or hub spoke topology, where you have a master in the middle and uh, all our masters are connected to it. Um, if you want uh, to have a very simple installation, you can have only one replicator. So you can have direct replication, where uh, Tungsten Replicator is extracting from the MySQL, from a, from a remote MySQL, by uh, downloading the relay logs and uh, applying them locally. So you don't need two replicators. And uh, with all that said, uh, there is, of course, heterogeneous replication, which we will look into. Before diving in there, one comment about installation. So, um, there is so-called tungsten installer. When you download a replicator, you have it. And uh, it works <coughs> by installing... You, you take the uh, archive, the targz file, you extract it uh, on one machine. And then you just uh, need SSH access to other machines. And you run Tungsten Installer with parameters, and it will deploy your topology to those machines for you. So you don't need to issue Tungsten Installer command many times. It's enough to do it once. <coughs> and for example, here is how the installer command might look like. You just uh, provide the topology, 
master slave, uh, which uh, nodes you want to install it into cluster hosts, which is the master host. You provide the password and username to the database and where to install it. It will check for the prerequisites, uh, validate the environment, and uh, install. So let's talk about the application between Oracle and MySQL. Um, what are the challenges in this heterogeneous case? First of all, the replication setup itself. Uh, especially if you have Oracle as the master, it is not trivial. And uh, we'll talk about that. Then provisioning. So, okay, you have uh, a database on the master, let's say it's uh, Oracle, and you have an empty database on the slave. You need to provision the database with, to, with data, because it is empty. So, how to do that? Um, how we usually uh, solve the provisioning problem is actually use the same replication technique. So, you have you set up the replication from master to slave, from Oracle to MySQL. Uh, Oracle has the data, but uh, MySQL is empty. So what you could do is uh, reload the data to Oracle, and replication will replicate it out to the slave. And the slave will be provisioned with, with this data. It will receive the data. What is good about this approach is that uh, you check, you test the replication. All the data types that you have will go through and uh, if there are problems, you will see it. So it's a good test. Um, another issue is uh, with SQL dialect. So when you are in a heterogeneous environment, the SQL is different. And uh, if, if you're replicating, let's say, from MySQL to Oracle, uh, you cannot reliably use statement replication. Because in the statement replication, if you have insert into some table, it is just a textual representation. And uh, on the Oracle side, it might just not work because of data differences. So what we usually do is uh, turn on row-based replication and uh, then those events travel as structures. And I will show you in a demo how they look like, which can be formatted, the data types can be changed. Um, there is another issue with character sets. So in MySQL, you can have a mess with character sets. And uh, this is an issue, and the recommendation is usually to stick to one character set throughout. Do not <coughs> mix it. Yeah. Um, there's also an issue with, with cases. So we can uh, table cases and uh, column names. In MySQL world, you usually have lowercase. In Oracle, you have uppercase. So you need to map this. As, uh, Replicator supports transaction filtering on the fly. Uh, we have filters which uh, actually do this for you. And you can turn them off or, or not. Uh, data type mapping. Some data types do not uh, replicate out at all, like uh, uh, enumeration or uh, text. For example, um, if you have text field on MySQL uh, and uh, on Oracle, you have n bar char. Uh, n bar char can, can only have uh, 4,000 characters. So you will not be able to replicate that out. And uh, so we might want to use on the Oracle site n claw or something like that. Yes? Um, why do you use the n types? No, no, it's just an example. Oh, right. you, you could use uh, anything. Um, the idea is that. Uh, when a replicator replicates, 
it uh, doesn't really care what data type you have there. So it will fit it, but if it's not enough uh, space, you will get an error. So it's a good practice to check everything before. Um, SEMA name mapping. In uh, MySQL, you can have one SEMA name, in Oracle, another one. And you need to rename on the fly. And uh, Replicator does that. So these are just some of the examples of challenges that uh, we hit in real deployments. So let's look at architecture. This is a real-world uh, scenario from a customer where uh, it has MySQL master, which is fed with web-based sales, so it's a uh, web app, and uh, it has like a million transactions per day, and uh, they need this uh, information uh, in their purchase order and system as quickly as possible. Uh, and uh, the purchase ordering system is uh, written on Oracle. And uh, so their requirement was to have a replication which would replicate out the data in less than 60 seconds. So we came there and uh, used the replicator to implement that. And uh, how, how we did that. So on the MySQL side, as mentioned, you have uh, binary logging enabled with row-based logging. And there are two replicators, one on the master side, one on the slave side. On the master side, we have a special filter for the MySQL, which transforms a new uh, type to string, to text. Why? Because uh, if you have an enumeration type in MySQL, it will in the binary log, it will not have the value of an enumeration, it will only have an index. So if you have an enumeration uh, uh, red, green, blue, in the binary log you will receive 1, 2, 3. And if we just took that and replicated it out to Oracle, <laughs> we would have there 1, 2, 3. And on Oracle we do not have an enumeration, right? So what we really want is to have red, green, blue, replicating to Oracle text field. So that's why we have that filter in this particular uh, use case enabled. Um, on the slave side, on the Oracle side, we have a little bit more. First we have a filter to ignore extra tables. It so happens that uh, customers usually don't need everything uh, that comes in and you can filter out the tables that, that uh, are not needed. You, you can choose, you can have this on the slave side or on the master side, it depends. In this case, we filter the tables out on the slave side because we can connect to the master another slave for MySQL, for uh, uh, having a slave for backups, for reporting, for reporting purposes. So that's why we don't want to filter out everything on the master. Um, so back to the Oracle slave, when we have filtered out uh, the data that we need, we then map uh, the names, the column names, the table names to uppercase. Because on the Oracle we have uh, all the tables in uppercase. And then there's uh, a filter which optimizes updates um, to remove unchanged columns. You see, in MySQL, if you uh, do an update on a table which has 30 columns, and only one column change, in the binary log you still get all the 30 columns. So it's not efficient to apply that on Oracle. Um, so before applying, we check which uh, columns really changed, and leave only that one column that has changed. Of course, for this to work, you need to have primary keys on, uh, on the Oracle side. 
but having primary keys is, is uh, usually always the, the recommendation for heterogeneous replication and not only. <laughs> Um, let's look the other way around. This is a customer case which has uh, Oracle Master and this is TV program content uh, descriptions. And uh, they also need that real-time publication to, the, to their web-based catalog. And of course, the web-based catalog is based on MySQL. And, uh, Again, the requirement was real-time replication based on Oracle Master. So it's completely different <coughs> beast because uh, we need to extract from Oracle, not from MySQL anymore. So how we do that? Uh, this works on Oracle Standard Edition, uh, latest uh, patch 10.2.05. Uh, and on uh, Enterprise Edition, you need to enable, well actually, we enable uh, CDC, which is Oracle Change Data Capture. It, uh, whenever you configure CDC on some table, <coughs> if you insert data, update or delete data on that table, the changes are locked in a separate CDC schema in a separate table, it's like change log. And uh, Replicator has an extractor called Oracle CDC extractor, which monitors uh, the needed tables for these changes. So instead of uh, tailing the MySQL binary log, we tail Oracle CDC tables. Um, and I will just show you how this looks like in just a few minutes. So when this data is extracted, we send it to the MySQL slave. On the MySQL slave, we have, uh, again, a filter to ignore any tables we don't need. But usually this is not needed a lot because when you configure CDC, you already specify which tables you need. We then have a filter to map names to lowercase, as this is MySQL, and some uh, internal, uh, we rename some internally used tables, like heartbeat table. So, at any instant, you can issue a heartbeat through the system to check whether it is alive. And, uh, with this, we can apply it to MySQL via GDBC call. Replicator is uh, written in Java, so we use the GDBC driver. With that said, let's see how this works. I will show you two demos. First, I will show you how to replicate, how, rep how Fancy replicates from uh, MySQL to Oracle and then vice versa. I have already installed this. So, I'm in the MySQL master, in the replicator binary folder, and uh, there is a, a command called trepctl, with which you can control the replicator. And I can write trepctl services to check at which position this replicator currently is. So, I can see last applied sequence number 32 blah 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 and um, the service name for this is from MySQL so as mentioned I could have uh, multiple services in one replicator um, I can issue a heartbeat just to check that replication is working so I write trepctl heartbeat this uh, inserts a transaction on the master and then if I go back to the Oracle slave and issue the same TRAP CTL services command I should see 
the last applied sequence number increased. Let's just check that it is the same. Yeah, so it was 493, then I inserted the heartbeat. Now it is 494 on the master. Oops. And uh, 494 on the slave. I can also see the applied latency, so it's about one second. Um, let's do a simple uh, use case. We'll create a table, fill in some data, look at that data and uh, see whether it replicates. And uh, finally we'll use Oracle uh, hierarchy SQL uh, command which is not supported in the MySQL just to make it more interesting. So, on my SQL I will create a table topology. I will show you first that this, topo this table topology does not exist on Oracle. Okay. So I go back to my SQL, create a table topology with uh, with three mm, columns. Then go back to Oracle, and the table is there. So this replicated the DDL. We usually do not recommend replicating DDL because it's very platform specific, vendor specific, but for this demo it is, it works because this is a simple create table statement. And uh, I will insert three rows as separate transactions. So I'm inserting uh, a topological data like uh, a cell, molecule and atom. So a cell consists of molecules, molecule consists of uh, atoms and we link the, this hierarchical relationship by the third column which just points to the parent of this item. Let's go back to the Oracle and check whether it's, the data is there. And it is. So we can see it uh, as a flat data. Um, let's look how this transactions, these transactions are saved in the transaction history log, THL. For this there is a command THL and I can write THL info and it reports me the last, uh, the highest and lowest sequence numbers, and then I can write THL list. I need to provide service name from my SQL and which sequence number I want to see. So let's look at the last one. Okay, here it is. So, to make it easier, um, you can see that in this uh, event, uh, a lot of information is saved, like timestamp, uh, event ID, so this, is, this corresponds to the MySQL binary log position, uh, source, some metadata, and uh, finally the type. So, in this case it is a uh, uh, replication DBMS event, in the heartbeat case it will be another type, but the most important thing is this section, uh, which corresponds to a structure. This is a structure of that row change event. So we see that this is an insert uh, to what schema, to the topology table, and that it's inserted Three, one row with three columns and uh, values. Note that there are no uh, column names because for this uh, heterogeneous replication we don't want column names to replicate because they might be different on MySQL and Oracle. Uh, but the ordering, we want the ordering of the columns to be correct. So for example in uh, Oracle, as far as I remember, you cannot have uh, column named comments this is a reserved keyword, and there are more. So you, there, we, we hit cases when 
customer has name on MySQL server which cannot have, be on the Oracle. Uh, and Replicator just maps the position and solves that problem. Okay, so let's insert some more data. Let's try a transaction. We'll begin commit and three rows in the middle. So we inserted proton, electron, and neutron as uh, ch children of atom. <clears throat> if I look in the THL for this transaction, I can see that this single replication DBMS event contains three structures, each for the, tr for the separate transaction. So, and let's check whether that is replicated out to the Oracle. And it is. You can see that my new rows are here. So, finally, what I can do, I can um, issue an Oracle statement which is impossible to do so easily, at least in MySQL. I will use connect by prior keyword, uh, which is very useful for formulating uh, hierarchical queries. So what this query does, it uh, returns the hierarchy in visual, in visual way, in visual representation. So now we can see that uh, the cell con consists of molecules, molecule of atoms, and so on. Uh, to make this demo complete, let's update, uh, let's insert one more row, body, if I do the query again on the Oracle side, I see this body at the bottom, and I want this body to become the master of all these children. So I will update the table. On the MySQL side, I'm updating this body um, to become the master. And voila, it's here. And finally, I can delete everything. there is no data anymore. I just wanted to show you that it works. This concludes the first demo. Uh, the second demo I have for you is replicating from Oracle to MySQL. Let's connect to my Oracle instance by using Oracle SQL Developer. I have a schema demo. Uh, you can't really see this. I hope this is better. Um, and it has two tables currently. Program and schedule. But uh, what I want to do, I want to add a new table and replicate it to MySQL. How to do this? Um, first, I need to add this table to the Oracle. Let's call this table birds. Let it have primary key, <coughs> name, and notes. Note. And let's add this table to Oracle. Now, uh, Oracle to MySQL replication does not replicate TDL. So, I need to create this table in the MySQL. So, I will go to my MySQL instance, 
check what tables I have here. Okay, currently I only have the program and schedule table. So I will create the table in MySQL. Table of birds with primary <coughs> name and and notes. Okay, so now we have where to put the data. Um, now, what I need, I need tungsten replicator. Uh, for this demo, to save time, I have it installed. I have a replicator on the Oracle side in this folder. But uh, as mentioned, we need to prepare the Oracle CDC for this new table. For this, um, we have a script called setupcdc.sh, which takes a configuration file setupcdc.com. And I want to show you this file. In this file, we need to specify the user with which to connect to Oracle because the script will create the CDC tables for us, so it needs a user. Uh, we tell which schema uh, do we want to replicate out. So in our case, it is demo schema with those three tables now. We also tell, uh, specify the name of the publisher schema. The publisher schema will contain the change data tables. It, the script will create us, will create those tables for us. It will be called demo underscore pub. We specify passwords. It's, it will create that password. Um, and we specify CDC. Oops, CDC type. Synchronous source. Uh, CDCs, we support synchronous CDC and uh, hotlock asynchronous CDC. Uh, for different versions of Oracle, depending on the license you have, you will choose a different one. In this case, we will use the synchronous CDC. Okay, so it's as simple as that. And uh, before running the, this script, I need to stop current replicator because it is using the demo publisher scheme already and we will rate it. I need to disconnect from the publisher schema and I'm not connected, so it's okay. Um, and run the setup CDC script. So it's removing old uh, CDC installations, deleting old publisher and tungsten user, and creating the new publisher schema. Now we can go back to Oracle, to the publisher database, demo underscore pub. Let's make it visible. Uh, this uh, database is now recreated. And we should see those three tables here. And we do. So you see a change table for program, schedule, and birds. If I, if I go inside the birds, change table, and check uh, its contents, it is empty correctly. And that is, that is OK. So, I can start the replicator again. On the slave side, note that, uh, well, maybe it's diff difficult to read, but the slave was always online. When the master went, uh, was stopped, the slave uh, went uh, into so-called state offline, uh, synchronizing. And you can see in the log, it tries, it retried several times to connect. When I started the master, retry was successful and uh, replicator went into online state. So replicator has this state machine model. Um, 
So now we can do some replication. Let's go back to the works table on the Oracle. Okay. And let's insert swans as this is continuous logo. When you press commit, Oracle takes a few seconds depending on the configuration for this to be saved in the change table. So if I go back to the change table, you can see a new row. And if I look at the log of the master replicator, it was there was no data available first, but then it saw the, these changes and uh, extracted them. Then uh, if I go to the slave, to the MySQL slave, I see the last apply sequence number 85. I can drill down to it with the THL command, THL list minus service or MySQL minus sequence number 85. And we can see the same generic row structure as in the previous demo. You can see the values. Let's check whether it's actually replicated out. Uh, where is our... Okay, this is my SQL. And it is. So... Just to show you that it really works, we can do updates. Let's call them the spirit swap and commit. The latency is a little bit slower than going from MySQL to Oracle because CDC takes some time to propagate the data. But here, the data is replicated out. So, this concludes the demo, and I still have 10 minutes, so I can show you the powers of tungsten uh, high availability and scalability solution. So let's talk a little bit about simple and automated failover for MySQL. Uh, typical starting point for um, database and application, you have application server, you have some sort of proxy, you have uh, two or more web servers, uh, and you have one MySQL database. One day the database is gone, and you're crying. So, instead with Tungsten Enterprise, which is based on Tungsten Replicator and everything we've seen during this presentation, uh, you can have an abstract data source which consists of multiple databases underneath but your applications uh, think that this is one. And this is a commercial solution for high availability, scalability and data management. And actually disaster recovery too, as I will try to show you. Um, the foundation of the enterprise are consistent copies of uh, data between multiple servers maintained by Tens and Replicator. Uh, there is Tungsten Connector, which is a MySQL proxy, which allows applications to connect only to one or several uh, Tungsten connectors, but the connectors will route the application to the slave or master depending on the needs. And most importantly, everything is monitored and orchestrated by a component called Tungsten Manager. With the latest version, we have introduced system of record approach, which allows a disaster recovery, so multi-site operation. Um, 
This is how you would implement uh, replication with only replicator. So you have master and a couple of slaves and applications go to the uh, master. But what happens if uh, there's a master failure? If, uh, if the slaves are lagging too, ha too, too much, uh, how to add a new slave? How to switch roles for maintenance? So these are all questions that uh, TE addresses. And how, and this looks like this. So instead of only having the replicators, on the application side you have tungsten connectors, and uh, on the database nodes you have the managers. The managers communicate with each other, and they, they, have, uh, they are monitoring the database, the network, and if something goes wrong, there are automated rules that fix, that try to fix the cluster. Um, let's see how automatic failover happens. So you have three nodes. You have a cluster with master and two slaves. Uh, master DBMS uh, failure happens. Then Tungsten notices this and uh, takes the most up-to-date slave as a slave for promotion. This is automatic, this happens under the hood in less than a minute. Um, this slave is then promoted to a master and uh, the other slave is reconfigured to connect to this master. So it wouldn't hang in the air because its old master is now gone. And uh, then what you usually want to do is recover the failed master. And again, the, in the console this is one command. You just type recover the failed master and it takes care of everything. Um, so that's how automatic failover works. By the way, in all this, the applications are also rerouted correctly because the connector is talking with the managers. What about disaster recovery? So, you need to survive a full site outage. If you need to survive a full site outage, if you need to uh, survive bad internet service provider connection, uh, then you need DR. And this is DR is the first step to move to region operation. Um, how Tungsten implements this? <coughs> it provides a concept that is called composite data service. And it can switch master across sites. Let's see how this looks like. Let's say you have a Tungsten uh, cluster in, uh, let's say, California. Uh, and you want to have, uh, and this is called data service. This cluster is called data service because your application is, is uh, seeing this as a data service. And then you have another cluster in, uh, let's say, in New York. Tungsten can replicate data across the continent to the other cluster. If any master fails inside of this uh, one of these data services, everything automated failover or maintenance switch that is still valid here. But uh, what is more, that uh, this can these two data services, which are across different sites, can work as a composite data service. And if one site fails, uh, you can switch to a disaster recovery site, which has the data. We do not uh, propose automatic failover for this, for multi-site, because uh, it's not secure, but we propose an automated failover. So it is uh, fairly easy to do. There is a command for that. But it will be it shall be executed by administrator. Okay. And 
finally, let's conclude this talk with more replication tricks. Uh, what you can do with all this? You can actually connect your favorite clusters. If you have Oracle Rack, you can connect it to, enter, uh, to Tungsten Enterprise Cluster for MySQL, with, uh, like in the demos I showed you. So this is, becomes really interesting. Um, if you have shared MySQL <coughs> operational data across multiple clusters, you can aggregate it into one MySQL, cluster, uh, MySQL server for your let's say, MySQL applications reporting. And then you can load the Oracle Data Warehouse. Uh, more, you could have uh, high availability clusters on the left, so your shared MySQL services can be could be highly available, and you could uh, aggregate data from from these clusters. Uh, in case you happen to have have multiple Oracle instances and need web facing MySQL DBMS to receive the data. Again, you can do that with uh, two replicator services. So instead of one service, you use two replicator services. And so just aggregate data to the web-facing MySQL. And that web-facing MySQL could also have the HA and scaling. Uh, finally, you can, work, uh, you can replicate from MySQL, as mentioned, to Vertica, uh, to NoSQL MongoDB database, to Postgres SQL. So, all in all, uh, the replicator is a solution to many uh, replication, simple and complex replication needs. Heterogeneous replication is one of them. Uh, if you need HA and scaling at Tencent Enterprise, and uh, for DR also. Partners in uh, Europe, we have partners Stylus Cloud and for Linux. Uh, this is some pricing slide. It just be it cheaper than Golden Gate. It should be a lot cheaper. At least when we get customers, they pay for Golden Gate. It's something, yeah. Well, I won't. It's Golden Gate prices, so there are a couple of extra zeros. Yeah, exactly. They stack. They stack up very quickly. And we don't have that per processor uh, scheme. We just have per DBMS. Or, for example, if you have a uh, heterogeneous replication, then it's uh, like consulting. We get, we get consulting engagement because usually it's a lot of. Uh, they need a lot of help. It's not only deployment. You need recommendations. So, and we work with customers like that. Uh, and that's it. These are some blogs. Uh, mine is flyingclusters.blogspot.com. And others, I think you know. Um, any questions? <coughs> I'm one minute behind the schedule. You are forbidden. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>